Some of these students may have just learned how to use a tape measure or a saw, but they're quick learners and hard workers with an important mission to build homes for people who desperately need them. I was uh, homeless and living in uh, shelters, church basements. Um, prior to that, I owned a home um, and I lost it to foreclosure. Um, and it was because I got really sick and ended up in the hospital and kind of lost everything. Nicholsville is a Seattle's largest homeless encampment. A homeless encampment is essentially a group of people who've come together to provide safety and community to one another. And there are some rules that go along with Nicholsville. You can't be engaged in any kind of substance use beyond coffee. Uh, you really have to put in community service hours and contribute to the life of the camp while you're there. Sarah Smith leads Sawhorse Revolution, a youth-oriented construction program currently focused on building an eco-village at Nicholsville, including a communal kitchen and a series of personal shelters that are efficient, custom tiny homes. One of the big things we stress in the program is that homelessness is a point in time event. It's not a result of who you are. So homelessness is something that happens to you. And I think we see that reflected in Nicholsville. People from all walks of life, families, uh, you know, single men, single women, all can land in this camp. The program is also a crash course in carpentry and design skills for the students who experience what it's like to design a structure for a client. We actually go to the homeless community and check in um, and have a couple different interviews with them to see what they need. Materials for the tiny homes are sometimes donated or reused from architecture firms or salvage stores. We actually have a range of students. A lot of them come from their woodshop class where they're just making a little box, so they might know how to use a tape measure, but the concept of framing a house is something they can't explore in school. From a certain project, if you were to drop me on an island, I wouldn't be able to build anything, probably die off in like two days. And then if until now you drop me on an island, I'll probably like make a shelter for myself, make my own tools and stuff. This house basically is a 10 by 9 on the interior because we sacrificed some of the floor space for a nice covered porch. There's going to be an interior loft bed that essentially has some closet space underneath, um, as well as shoe storage space. There's a bench that flips up and down that has storage inside of it that's lockable. A tiny home is a really natural fit for people and groups experiencing homelessness. It has the uh, aspect of being a home. You can build them really quickly and at a low expense without permitting for the most part. It's transitionary. It's a way for me to be able to save money. You know, I got a place to stay. I can participate in the encampment, you know, doing my security shifts. And it's a way for me to save money so I can get that first lesson to pause and get back into an apartment. It's great to be able to have a key and a lock on, you know, a door and have your own space that's secure. Uh, it's very important. It's a big difference. It's given me greater awareness to like the daily struggles of a lot of people who are homeless in Seattle and I can't wait to see like somebody actually living in that house right there because I'll know like hey I built that. It's just a great thing. To find out what rights the homeless have, watch this next episode on Seeker Daily. In Rhode Island, Connecticut, and Illinois, some legislation is referred to as a homeless bill of rights. It attempts to guarantee equal access for all to medical care, free speech, free movement, voting rights, employment opportunities, and privacy. Thanks for watching and be sure to subscribe to Seeker Stories for new videos every week.